so I have to start my whole screen otherwise there are some problems you can see my screen right okay so today we'll start uh, the machine learning course uh, you can think that the machine learning is a part of computer science or it but uh, truly speaking it is not like that uh, now uh, it is a interdisciplinary subject in this mode that people all over the world are using machine learning techniques and oh you see still someone is asking to join just a minute can you can you give uh, instructions to the whatsapp group that they can wait for 10 more minutes so that i will join them together okay 10 more minutes is out so so the thing is that machine learning is always a choice or preference of all of us the need is that because there is a need you know in engineering field we know that if there is a need then uh, the development is there so in these cases also there is a need of machine learning so uh, we have to know this subject only because not all that uh, everywhere it is being used not like that because it has some kind of a perspectives which are very interesting and if we uh, as a human being we don't have any access uh, to the system always but what kind of things that we can deal with we all are usually we all used to deal with the data and machine learning actually allows us to deal with the data data means it may be any form of data means data has no specification data means in your field, maybe in electrical, maybe mechanical, whatever the data you have in printing power, the data will be different, but they have some kind of a nature. So what kind of nature is there? How the data is represented? So we will discuss over those generalization issues that how the data are actually represented and how they are actually being tackled using machine learning techniques. So before that, I would like to give you a small introduction of my uh, special research area only in the view of that maybe some of the examples that I would like to share in the course that will be based on our subject areas, especially uh, as we are people of natural language processing or text analytics. <coughs> it is a, actually a subject of Google. So what Google actually used to do, all of the people like us used to do that, those kind of jobs. So all of our examples may be quite related with those field and the like text analytics or natural language processing so uh, give you a brief introductions uh, for that purpose only that regarding those uh, course so we used to teach uh, nlp in our uh, cac department and other uh, mcs means masters and ug level also apart from that we used to teach machine learning and human computer interaction also so uh, today, actually a decade of multi-modal information access, that means that uh, only by based on text or based on audio or based on images, it is very difficult to process the data or process, to get some kind of a good applications. So the people are trying to think that whether we can merge the modes means we, whether we can extract the information from audio, text, video, image, and so on, and then uh, can get a complete set of information from all the modes, and then we can use some kind of a ML or DL technique to uh, get some kind of insights of the data. So that multimodal things are becoming very popular in this decade, and uh, I hope in future, maybe after two or three years later, you will see also that the multimodal systems are will be available in the domain of uh, internet and uh, there are a lot of bot applications i think you have seen in the, the men's platform that uh, chatbot you cannot uh, even imagine that uh, you are uh, 
talking with a friend or you are talking with a person <coughs> who is actually a computer machine you do not know so those kind of agents are becoming uh, very popular in this decade so how we can build such kind of a system how much intelligence that we can provide to the systems so that the machine will be act will act like a human being so it is the challenge of uh, this kind of fields uh, there are a lot of team members are there from phd uh, so uh, we used to work on this uh, you you do not need to go through all these details only for your information or your understanding of the things i would like to share that we used to work on the multimodal music mood analysis that means that uh, we often we people used to see the uh, used to listen the music but uh, after listening the music or before listening the music we have some kind of emotions or sentiment that are being elicited so how to predict that what kind of emotions will be developed after listening this kind of a music even if you see in the uh, internet that there are some applications of uh, yonder applications like uh, artist wise they are recommending you to listen that music so suppose you have given a music for sonu nigam it will recommend the similar musics of sonu nigam and the rocks uh, like that so this kind of a recommendation systems are actually an application of this area so how to do that using some machine learning techniques uh, that we employ on the data to procure the system like a recommendation system so here one phd student has done his work on the data i means music data especially on the data like songs different songs in hindi uh, bengali and also we have tried to identify the uh, information from the lyrics also lyrics means the text scripts also so our future goal is to produce something uh, in a very both from the songs as well as from the lyrics also means from the audio as well as from the text in a multimodal fashion and to distinguish what kind of uh, listeners are there how they are feeling like uh, feeling happy or sad or being very alarmed or not like the lot of applications that can be done uh, maybe we are more interested on the other parts of this area like uh, notation because nobody has done the researches only uh, a professor in um, i think cmu he is working in this area to identify the music in uh, emotions or the sentiments from the notation notational information so it's very difficult job and we are also we are going to tackle with those uh, data also how to do the that data how to tackle with the data then uh, another area that we used to work on the information extraction which is very uh, interesting area and in uh, an useful and uh, required area also maybe that we are now facing a very uh, major problem like in covid situation so we know that how people are anxious about their health conditions so uh, we didn't think about that perspectives but now it is very much important to all of us that we should concern about our health so in information extraction in especially we uh, what we used to do is that uh, from a text or from a set of images we try to extract some kind of information or features so that uh, using some machine learning techniques whether we can identify that what type of diseases are there what kind of symptoms are there what kind of uh, relationships are there between different diseases or between different symptoms suppose i have a symptoms of covid of this kind and i have a disease of this kind so does it relate to covid or it doesn't like this kind of a conclusions whether we can draw from the uh, data or not then this is a, actually a class a task that is called medical concept identification we used to do this work with the professor of in tu singapore so uh, the main idea is that to identify the concepts from the uh, documents or the text and then assign those concepts with some kind of a category category means whether it's a disease or drug or human anatomy like that because category categorization is an important part of machine learning because always in machine learning we uh, do not uh, means uh, without classification or categorizations we cannot predict anything sometimes in, in most of the times even so 
that's why the categorization is a important uh, aspect not only in healthcare also in other tasks also and relationship extraction is also part of that suppose i have uh, identified a lot of categories but what are the relations what are the correlations between those categories how we can identify a very important features uh, so that we can distinguish the two categories because in machine learning you know the separations of the data or objects into different classes is is the problem and sometimes it is a very uh, difficult job so what people are thinking people are thinking not to separate the data rather than to modify the algorithm machine learning algorithms they can develop so that they will be very much suitable with the data so it is a dealing with the data and the algorithm so one part is the data another part is the algorithm we can change them one after another and then we can fine tune the our model and so on so information extraction in another area of healthcare another uh, uh, because where it is apl applicable is that it is applicable suppose uh, the doctors are there and doctors are also and uh, patients are there so how they used to communicate with each other so they will uh, share some kind of online prescriptions or reporting or messages or maybe they will share the x-ray reports or blood reports or so on so all of those data are actually unstructured in nature you know because all are written handwritten or uh, means casually written not even you can I, I just want to mention that even in case of Kolkata, I have found that RG Corps Medical College or National Medical College, they even do not uh, uh, get the kind of a digital data in their hand also. I was surprised that even I have seen it in Apollo or in uh, other healthcare uh, hospitals, but in uh, our national uh, or maybe the state level hospitals, they do not uh mean stored the data in digital form so it's very uh huge job and there is a chance of uh, accessing those kind of machine learning techniques also over the data because patients used to share their information on uh, those reports only because patients information are there so how to tackle with those kind of data all are there in the unstructured in nature often we, what we used to do is that now, suppose it is a raw data in image form so what uh, we people do we people try to uh, apply some kind of a ocr it is called optical character record recognizer so on that top of that we'll extract the digital information and from the digital information we try to process uh, using some ml techniques so these are actually the way to do with the raw data and uh, from the uh digital data our always our motivations should be to procure some kind of a structured data as you know that database or structured data until and unless we have we cannot see or we cannot process the data in a computational way so always our motivation is to procure some kind of a structured corpus out of the unstructured corpus corpus is a terminology that we used to pre uh, mention about a big uh, size of the data if there is a big size of the data means uh, trillions of millions of documents are there or maybe words are there we generally prefer to term it as a corpus so uh, our always our motivation to prepare the data is that uh, to prepare them structured data out of some unstructured data and then uh, we need to identify the category then relationship and so on even we can uh, our ultimate motivations to go to some applications like recommendation system is one of the applications areas where people used to rely on the system that okay okay excuse me i think some of them are waiting so we can just include them Oh, someone is still there. So, uh, what the ultimate things it will give? It will give some kind of a system generated guidelines. You can say that, okay, so uh, does it give some kind of a prescriptions? Yes, it gives a kind of a prescriptions, but 
truly speaking it is generated by machine and it should be evaluated by always a human expert till date hum, uh, a machine cannot go uh, uh, means cannot be more intelligent than a human being so always it can help the human being with some kind of an extent so that we can we, we cannot replace a doctor but we can replace or we can guide them at some moment so that doctors can identify okay these are the symptoms these are the diseases these are the relations so they will be guided to procure the things in a very uh, speedy manner so how we can uh, guide the experts as well as the non-experts with some extent to provide some reliable information so validation is always there but uh, apart from the validation also the time it, it will save the time it will save the effort of the uh, human expert to uh, to give the prescriptions to the patients like that so it's a kind of a digital one then the other one is i do not explain because it is a if there is a huge amount volume of data we uh, in the different uh, means epics in indian literature we need to process that and then another important applications of machine learning now ever in social networks why it is becoming popular only because of the social networks because social networks we are sharing about all information you know in this lockdown period or in this covid situations we know that how much we are being dependable on the social networks so until and un because all all of the information that we are sharing all are important maybe this these are fake maybe these are uh, true but we do not know but we are sharing that information in the network and uh, for communication purpose this data are being used not only for the communication purpose even for building a huge amount of well planned applications digital applications this social network data are being used so twitter data is the one of the important repository in this decade that people are using the twitter data to uh, means get all of those applications whatever they can think even from each of the dis uh, your discipline also you can extract a lot of information from the twitter even from the facebook even from the whatsapp uh, different chat messages whatsapp and facebook they have some kind of restrictions but twitter till date we can say that they are much more free in getting the access over the data so how much data we can accurate from those twitter uh, and how can we utilize them for procuring some kind of uh, applications for machine learning that is uh, that is the decade that has come means uh, now we can see a lot of applications that are available all are based mostly based on the twitter data because twitter data the f facility is that it is a very short span of text and it is hard to is, is uh, easy to process also and uh, a huge amount of information that are available on the twitter data any kind of uh, applications that we can build on the twitter data and like that so social network text and uh, also the information security is uh, concerned over there but uh, we need to access the twitter data for different applications here actually in our project we prefer to work on the uh, means terrorist profiling identifications like if in twitter there are a lot of means it's a secured project that if there are a lot of applications or maybe messages are being exchanged between different groups so how the groups are actually being formed in the social network can we extract those graph structure from the social network yes by exchanging the messages if we can identify okay these are the fake messages or these are the vulnerable messages are being exchanged between these two groups or this many groups so whether we can spot in the network and detect that okay using some graph uh, graphical techniques you know that there are a lot of graph algorithms are there uh, in your course i think you have uh, already aware with uh, dfs bfs a lot of uh, graph algorithms are there so using those algorithms like whether we can identify those groups or not so all of those kind of applications are actually under the purview of machine learning because without machine learning we cannot identify that groups or that networks right so this kind of uh, uh, techniques we used to follow for identifying those uh, uh, means vulnerability uh, ratio also means how much vulnerable a social network group is also then uh, this is an important uh, uh, 
area also in uh, case of ours is in this decade is called code mixing because all of us we know that uh, in chat especially in whatsapp in messages always we used to mix our languages uh, if we know that it's a uh, hindi and bengali we often mix the languages between uh, hindi and bengali often i talk we generally uh, uh, say that ye uh, what kis lang ka hai bhai what ta bangla ta i mean bengali bengali mein hai ye that's a lot of what mixed things we used to do on the uh, text right so this is a kind of a new generation of the language uh, you can say the younger generation of the language so always our objective is to uh, be build some kind of applications for this new generation of the language so this is one of the areas that we are mostly uh, working on and we are maybe you can say the starter of this kind of jobs then dialogue processing with other professors in IIIT Delhi and uh, University of Valencia, Spain. We used to work on the agent-based work or dialogue processing. So these are, and um, there is another, uh, I think you have heard the Sivaji sir. He's also from Jadapur University. He is the director of NIT Silchar now. So we used to work with the machine translation areas that uh, uh, machine, whether machine can translate the sentiment or not, uh, Google, how much information, how much quality translated output Google can give. So those kind of analysis we used to do in this job. Then uh, question answering is another important area where we used to, we people used to do uh, like question answering for basic science subjects. Like we uh, know that most of our uh, Indian uh, people are non-native English uh, speakers. So they used to face a lot of problems in case of learning a subjects or tutorials. So whether we can build some applications for them so that they will get the information in or the things uh, uh, that are available in English or other languages that can be translated into their native languages or not. And then they can access that one. So maybe there are a lot of problems that whether the semantics should be contained in that uh, translated form or not whether it is very well defined or maybe the uh, you know the readability should is a concern then complexity is a problem like i have translated the text but it is not comprehensible enough for the students so with how we can tackle that situation so these kind of a problems are there and we are trying to do deal with those jobs and maybe the you know the in the search engine we know that uh, in the earlier days we couldn't get such kind of a um, we, even with till date we cannot give the mathematical uh, equations on the search engine and it cannot give some results but there are uh, interesting area which is called math uh, search engine or math information retrieval kind of a thing where we can if we can give some kind of a questions it returns some answers so it's an interesting area and google is very much uh, pop becoming popular for this uh, jobs of dealing with this uh, science uh, subjects retrieval of the science subjects or to procure the documents or the search results for the science subjects so these are some of the interesting areas summarization is another area so i will not de uh, make you more detail over that then another important area is natural language generation that means that from the image right so uh, there e how many objects are there how using image processing techniques we can identify that how many objects are present in that image and what are the relations between those objects in that image so uh, using the deep uh, means the machine learning techniques we can uh, identify that how many objects are there what are the relations between the objects and then from that we can generate some captions of the images also so caption generation is another important area where people are used to uh, are, are trying to deal with so these are some of the important applications of machine learning uh, then another like citation analysis psycholinguistic speech area also a part of the machine learning where people are interested with so a lot of uh, application areas are there in uh, machine learning. It means all of the applications uh, in your area, you may find a lot of applications where you can employ the machine learning. And I hope uh, after learning this course, you will. Uh, this is a, actually a, a kind of intuition, a kind of a uh, means a hope also 
that after learning the course you will be able to identify a very good data set of your domain and also you can develop a very good uh, algorithm or maybe you can employ the existing algorithm machine learning algorithms also to apply on your data and to get some kind of a good interesting results so this is an expectation with these expectations i would like to uh, means uh, start the formal uh, the theoretical background of this course so we have a lot of projects over this um, uh, period and uh, one project is from drdo and uh, another is with um, dst and lot of minor projects are also there so uh, now we will start with the area of machine learning uh, formally this is an introduction and uh, i think uh, if someone is waiting uh, sorry to say that uh, it's a it's already too much time is over is there anyone i guess let's see okay one person is there only so uh, can we start okay. so machine learning so give you a, a road map of the course is also there suppose there are three parts we'll try to cover first part of oh, someone is still there uh, first part uh, we'll discuss about the basic backgrounds like introductions categories applications data and features especially this is the terms that you have to remember that what is data what is feature uh, what are the evaluation metrics for uh, doing the uh, evaluating the results of the model and so on so model this kind of a terminology you try to uh, means grasp by yourself so that it will be easy for you to comprehend the later part also so introduction apart from the introductions when part two and part three we will learn uh, some good uh, well-known ml algorithms maybe we'll learn more uh, rather than given here but uh, these are some of the well-known machine learning algorithms like k-means algorithm a base decision trees support vector machine and then we'll learn about the random forest uh, so we'll see that how we, uh, how much we can progress over this class. So in order to start, so these are the three basic parts uh, uh, by which we will try to cover up the course. So first part is that introduction in part one. First uh, topic is the introduction one. So machine learning. Machine learning is a buzzword we know for a few uh, years, past few years and the definition is given by arthur samuel in this way is that it enable the computers to learn from data that means there should be some kind of a data maybe a raw data maybe a formatted data maybe unformatted data that is a different issue but data should be there and computers or uh, computers means the always the algorithm computer means nothing but a computer computer cannot do anything computer algorithms used to learn from the data right and they try to improve themselves without being explicitly programmed so this clause is very much important without being explicitly programmed that means that for each of the data or data instances or data objects we should not write the program right even in C, in Java, whatever the languages we know, in computation, computer programming languages, we cannot use it for the every instance. If there are three lakhs instances are there in a data, so how to uh, identify the programs for three lakh instances? It is not feasible and not at all a, means a job of human being. So how can we do that? So that is the insights of machine learning is that by my knowing some kind of a label data or maybe some kind of a information in terms of features, if we can identify uh, that these data instances are similar to them, then we can group them or we can cluster them, we can categorize them. So without doing explicitly program to each of the instances the by learning from the data the algorithm tries to improve themselves that means by from the data it gets some knowledge an easy example is that suppose 
in your class one, you are not given with all of the things that you are doing at this uh, age of 22 or three, right? That means what? At that age, you were given some kind of uh, inputs to your uh, model and you are becoming trained over and over years to see that how the people are actually behaving so that I will behave like that, how the uh, um, uh, history is going on. So I will give the answer of the history in this way. So this is all about the learning process. So where from this learning process is going on by some example data in all of our environment there are some example data are there and we are learning each and every moment by looking at those kind of example data if it is the example of right thing okay i, wish, I oh, so i have a guess that okay this is right this is wrong maybe in the other uh, student uh, the things will be a vice versa but we are learning from the environment in this way so machine or computer program will or algorithm sorry not program actually algorithm will try to learn from the data in that way so if these features are common in most of the data so we can group them if based on the other features if these are the uh, instances are uh, can be grouped so group it and make it a different section so in this way they try to categorize the data or cluster the data and important thing is that prediction because uh, how this prediction comes from the data once we learn something that means we have some kind of a knowledge so learning something we get knowledge so as a human being we have this concept as it is same for the computer algorithm also so once we supply the data it learns from the data it gets some knowledge and once you are uh, it uh, you are giving some kind of a new instances it can predict you see it's very interesting right so from the knowledge it tries to predict so how much knowledge it gets it is a question but from learning the data it gets some knowledge like from learning the machine learning course we will get some knowledge similar way by learning the data we will get some knowledge and once the algorithm gets some knowledge it tries to apply it for predicting some kind of a results on the new data set right so this is the ultimate motivation of machine learning course because once we have data we will apply some machine learning algorithms machine learning algorithms will be uh, will get more knowledge or will be fine-tuned uh, based on the data and then it tries to predict some kind of a output on the new data Whatever the work we used to do, all about the machine learning algorithms are based on the mathematical models and statistical models. So truly speaking, that mathematical and statistical knowledges are actually required if we want to proceed with the machine learning algorithms. Because all of the algorithms, the fundamental of all the algorithms are based on the either mathematics or statistics. Because without that, we cannot uh, arbitrarily guess our data because as a human being we have a lot of intuitions but who will uh, uh, prove that our intuitions are correct or not only the mathematician or mathematics can prove that it is uh, true or uh, false right so until because mathematics you know mathematics is the fundamental one and the most uh, important one to learn because that without mathematical foundation nothing exists in this world and uh, statistics also you know that it is a part of that uh, field where people are now become pop not popular even much more uh, advanced only because of their uh, statistical advancing techniques so machine learning is all about this algorithms are actually based on the either mathematics and statistical one so reasons is that it there, it, there are a huge amount of data because everywhere the data are available in earlier days, what happened was there, even in case of your professors in your department, even in 10 years back, if we see the situations. So uh, to prepare a kind of a data, it took a huge, it, 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 it used to take a huge amount of time at that time, at, at 10 years before. But now the data are available. Even the infrastructure is also available. Means now we have a, a 
100 GB RAM, 200 GB, 600 GB RAMs are available. So infrastructures are also becoming Im improved. So based on the infrastructure and based on the uh, means data, availability of the data, the ML is becoming much more popular. And with uh, uh, another important point that you have to remember in machine learning is that more data means more knowledge. More data means more knowledge means more information means improvement is there. So if we are given with only A, B, C, D, we know only A, B, C, D. If we are given with A to Z, then we will learn A to Z. In a computer also, once we have more and more data, the algorithm, instead of modifying any algorithm, the algorithms will perform better. If we are given, uh, it is given with a more data. That means intelligence is being captured from more data. That is a very interesting insight that you try to think from your point of view also. That once we supply more and more amount of data, that means it is getting more and more information. And more information means more knowledge. More knowledge means it is uh, intelligence is becoming uh, means is enhanced is being enhanced also so like a human being also we are trying to make the machine also or we are trying to treat the machine as a human being also so these are much more popular for uh, offering the intelligent insights over the industries also uh, how it came into the literature as a course truly speaking as i mentioned is that intelligence because always we are trying to provide the intelligence to our computers so that computers are becoming much more faster, efficient and can uh, it's trying to supposed to replace the human being in most of the uh, means laborious jobs. So AI or artificial intelligence is the core field or the mother field of this ML, right? And uh, machine learning uh, is a is a kind of a uh, you know, an application uh, subfield of the AI because machine learning is a part of AI. Machine learning contains a lot of uh, other stuffs also, but it is a part of AI. Once there is a AI, always machine learning is actually uh, is there. In, uh, by somehow it is interlinked with that uh, AI domain. And uh, the truly speaking, this is a decade of deep learning. So you have heard a lot of terms and terminologies, maybe, I don't know, I'm not sure. So about the deep learning algorithms and people uh, are trying to forget the machine learning, means traditional machine learning algorithms. But truly speaking, deep learning is nothing about new. It is actually a pa part of the machine learning algorithms where people are not trying to invest time in developing the algorithms, fine. What they are trying to do, they are trying to make the app means the infrastructures much more robust so that by uh, adding more and more data, uh, the systems will be capable enough to predict the good output. So once we have a huge amount of data, nothing will matter because deep learning algorithms will work much more faster than traditional machine learning algorithms so till date we are trying to go from machine learning to deep learning that's why in traditional machine learning there are some limitations there even by applying or supplying a lot of data also the algorithms do not perform much more than the deep learning algorithms and another utility is there in deep learning is that uh, in machine learning, not utility, I would rather say that it is not an utility, it is a drawback also, uh, that is a perspective, because from my perspective, it is a drawback, because in machine learning, actually, we have a scope of human intervention to select what are the important properties of the data. Properties like, we generally uh, term it as a features, data, uh, features about the data instances or features about the data object right so in machine learning always we have a chance to deal with the as a human being we can deal with the raw features 
we can fine tune the features we can identify how to identify the important features how to identify the relationship between the features how to tune the systems based on those features this kind of a scopes that we have in machine learning is not there in deep learning because deep learning sometimes is, uh, acts as a kind of a black box where we just give the input and it tries to do the feature classification feature extraction and classification jobs by itself only by the algorithm itself or the infrastructure itself only and then it tries to predict but in case of machine learning we have a chance to interpret so from the drawbacks point of view i'd like to say that in deep learning uh, maybe the uh, infrast if once the infrastructure is there once the algorithm is very good then we can rely on the deep learning because until and unless we have enough data we cannot apply the deep learning so this is the drawback of deep learning another drawback is there there is no chance of human intervention and once uh, uh, we confirm that if we do not have any kind of a human intervention we cannot guess that what kind of a system is there how they are becoming uh, uh, how we can uh, improve the system fine so in case of machine learning, these advantages are there. Another point of uh, the uh, disadvantage of machine learning is that, that even after supplying a lot of data, the some of the algorithms are uh, working much more faster and better in some of the data set. Maybe for other data set or huge amount of data set, the performance is not at par with the deep learning performance. So for that purpose, people are nowadays are, uh, are going uh, in the direction of deep learning but truly speaking it has a dead end also why there is a dead end because we once we cannot uh, interact in between the algorithms where there is a lot of disadvantage of the uh, system is always there so what google is planning to do is that they are trying to make some kind of open source packages for making the deep learning applications I think you may he uh, hear the name of the TensorFlow. So TensorFlow is a kind of a deep learning architecture where we can provide the uh, means data and we can modify the their modules or their codings, their platforms, their features uh, parts also we can modify by according to our need. So for that purpose, deep learning may, may get a different directions if Google uh, successfully can produce the or procure the TensorFlow uh, algorithms properly. Otherwise, traditional machine learnings are till date are very much popular. Fine. Now, after the introduction, I would like to say that what type of just a minute. Oh, excuse me for one minute, huh? if you don't mind. Someone is asking. যেটা বলছো সেটাকে আমরা অন্য অ্যালগরিদমস দিয়ে ডিল করতে পারি আবার যেখানে মানে কোন কোন কেসে কি কি ধরনের অ্যালগরিদমস দিয়ে ডিল করব এটা পড়লে মনে হয় অনেকটা ক্লিয়ার হবে আর কি এই পার্টটা মানে আমাদের ম্যানুয়াল কারেকশন মেথডস মানে सपोज কোন একটা জায়গা অনেক কিছু করছি কিন্তু একটা পার্টিকুলার জায়গা মেশিন কিছু ভুল ইন্টারপ্রেট করছে তো আন্ডার দোজ সিচুয়েশনস মানে মানে হিউম্যান ম্যানুয়াল যাতে একটা কারেকশন মেকানিজম সেটার কি কোনো স্কোপ আছে হিউম্যান কারেকশনস করার স্কোপ আছে মানে মেশিন একটা প্রেডিক্ট করে দিল আর হিউম্যান এর একটা কারেকশনস আছে সেখান থেকেও তুমি একটা গেস করতে পারো যে অ্যালগরিদমটা কতটা বেটার হচ্ছে আর কি আমি আসবো একটার পর একটা আসবো হিউম্যান কারেকশনস কিভাবে করি বা ইভালুয়েশন ম্যাট্রিক্স গুলো কি কি আছে তার জন্য আচ্ছা ওকে ঠিক আছে একটু ওয়েট করে যাও মানে আমার মনে হয় পার্ট 1 টা হয়ে গেলে অনেকটা তোমাদের কাছে অনেকটা ক্লিয়ার হবে তারপর আমি প্রচুর क्वेश्चन আসবে আর কি অলরেডি ঠিক আছে সেগুলো তখন একটা একটা করে আমরা এ করব আর কি ঠিক আছে मेनलीस one is called supervised algorithms and another is called unsupervised algorithms so what we mean by uh, supervised learning that mean uh, unsupervised learning is that uh, we do not know 
what kind of classes our data instance belongs to we do not know and we are supposed to ask that try to divide your data set in such a way so that it can identify the groups by itself the algorithm and we can assign the categories based on those uh, groups only so it is a kind of a totally unsupervised there is no intervention of human supervision is there and computer programs or algorithms are trying to uh, cluster the data or grouping the data without taking help of any kind of an external knowledge or human being or anything it is purely an unsupervised learning stage that once we supply the data and it will the algorithm will split the data into different groups and once it forms the groups the groups will be such that the groups will automatically will form a certain kind of a classes the groups are there maybe there are misclassified members are should be there but at a certain point the groups are there and the uh, groups will be classified accordingly so ultimate task is the classification but we do not call it a classification rather than we call it a clustering clustering means grouping of the data objects we will see one by one and another part is called the supervised learning so what is supervised learning is that uh, uh, means if we are supplied with a human label data human label data means we first suppose that human being are much more intelligent than a computer so if a data is uh, tagged or categorized by some kind of a human being that means that data is a very gold standard data and accepted data so once we build our machine learning algorithms on those human level data so our algorithms should learn like a human being so that is the motivation of supervised learning that uh, if my teacher says something that means it is true not the case once i i can also give you false information but the thing is that because uh, once the teacher is knowledgeable in the machine learning field or any ai field that means once we uh, mean supply any kind of a new information for machine learning or ai also teacher can give the answer like that in supervised learning once we supply the label data to them the system will automatically try to predict which one is correct so from the human level data or gold standard data generally prefer to call it a gold standard data or human tag data or label data it tries to get the knowledge and tries to predict the results on some new data the new data is may, may or may not be labeled if it is labeled we can check the accuracy if it is not labeled also we can predict the classes also did you get the idea yes sir okay and supervised learning actually is uh, divided not actually divided actually it is a kind of a intuition to divide it into two types one is called the classification level of problems another is regression types of problems so based on the problems actually this uh, supervised learning is divided not actually it is divided but based on the problems actually it is divided classification is a problem where there are fixed level of classes are there but regression is a kind of a problem where fixed set of classes are not always possible to assign suppose if i would like to ask you that how much happy you are or how much sad you are you cannot say that how much happy means in what scale i want to say i say that you try to scale your happiness in from of 0 to 10 so that you will mark that i am 10 uh, 9.5% is happy like that so always our data set cannot be labeled in a discrete way that happy or sad fully maybe i am happy uh, with an intensity of 5% or have sad with an intensity of 2% or maybe 9% so once we do not have any fixed set of classes for our data set we have some kind of a scores scores means a continuous valued scores 0 0.5 2.5 and like that 
if these are scores and these are not classes actually class levels are not there only the scores are given instead of the class levels that type of problems are actually called the regression types of problems fine so two types of problems classification where the class levels are itself is mentioned that it is blue it is white it is gray class levels are there but in regression the class levels cannot be given in a discrete way rather than we can give some kind of a score instead of the class levels and machine learning algorithms tries to classify those instances based on those score level classes one important point that i'd like to share is that classification and regression these two types of problems can be converted into each other how suppose a regression scores are there from 0.5 to 5.5 if i can take it as a class then it can be classified so regression types of problems can be converted further into classification problem so sir, our logistic regression eh so is in that logistic regression mano we term the logistic regression baba ekta algorithm ha huh? रिग्रेशन प्रब्लेम शुद्ध बी मैं एड्रेस कर प्रब्लेम मैं टाइप अफ प्रब्लेम हम रिग्रेशन हैंडल करब रिग्रेशन प्रब्लेम यूजिंग लजिस्टिक रिग्रेशन एलगोरिदम दिए बोझा गया लजिस्टिकम एन एलगोरिदम ठीक है Yes. Tables are in a bandwidth like zero to twenty, something like that. Yes, yeah, sc scores are like that. Uh, suppose in some of the data we do not have, we cannot give a fixed level that it is a class one, class two, class three like that. Instead, we can give some kind of a score zero point five, zero point six, and that that is the final uh, scores or consider uh, as a class also. So. once we have a continuous valued scores it a machine learning algorithm it is very difficult to classify based on those scores because scores are continuous in nature how much classes should we consider for them so for that purpose we generally prefer to uh, apply some kind of a regression uh, classifier like logistic regression linear regression gaussian regression lot of uh, means methods that we apply on that and then finally we conclude that okay these are the scores and based on the scores this is the result but my point is that regression problem can be converted into classification problem also if even if there are continuous scores are there in the data uh, as a label but we can uh, means divide the scores into different ranges and assign the class level to each of the ranges fine suppose 0.5 to 1.5 i will give class 1 1.5 to 2.5 i have given class 2 like that we can assign the class levels also on the data clear yes sir sir uh, for example let's say that i have to pre predict uh, the like the madhyamik result of a school okay mm -hmm. so given on the past data mm -hmm. so what will we use uh, what method are we going to use here yes suppose pass regression. and fail suppose pass and fail is a fixed classes right yes and suppose uh, based on the marks like in uh, uh, physics chemistry history mathematics lot of scores are there so we cannot classify the uh, students in terms of the scores because it is a huge uh, level, uh, means classes are there means huge number of classes are there so instead of the classes if we can Uh, means those classes are actually classified by the regression types of classifier and once it is done so new data once it is come so we can predict the scores also for the new student and once this uh, scores are given so based on the scores we can classify that whether the student will fail or student will pass so there is a kind of a prediction that based on the data the algorithms will try to learn whether a student uh, given a marks they will pass or fail so this prediction if we want to do on the uh, new data so first we have to build the applications on the label data and label data the scores are there the scores of different subjects are there so we can build the classifier 
on the regression classifier and can apply that but this is a, means a very costly jobs so what we can do we can just segregate the students based on their scores into different classes pass and fail and then also we can train the system accordingly so classification and regression is a very slight difference is there and we can convert the regression types of problems into color classification and can predict that whether it will fail or pass okay i will see one by one i'll okay. i'll show you the exact uh, part of that uh, sir i had one question yes uh, sir in classification or in regression uh, the like the algorithm is kind of like we use the statistics of the previous data to make new predictions for the yeah. new kind of data and in mm -hmm. clustering we can kind of assume like uh, if there is a graph or like a geometric space we kind of uh, put all the points that are uh, close together into one cluster mm -hmm. but so what about the like reinforcement learning Does yes i'm coming one by one just a minute only two minutes you will learn what is reinforcement just wait fine only after four slides the things are there i will just do one by one okay sir. okay so supervised learning algorithm the ai system is presented with the data which is labeled Try to remember that supervised means there should be a label data. It means that each data is stacked with the correct label. Each data means each data object or data instance, whatever you can say, is stacked with the correct label. And our goal is to approximate some kind of a mapping function. So this mapping function is actually called, sometimes called the kernel function. So always supervised learning algorithms, the goal of this mapping function so that it maps the input data to some output variable means based on the training it tries to predict the class on the output data suppose that here is an example is given that we are supplying the machines for learning that which email message is spam and which email message is not spam we are supplying continuously supplying the data and the system is learning from that then once the new mails are coming into the system so it can automatically classify or categorize that which one is spam and which one is not spam so it enables the machine to classify based on the label data label data means we are supplying the data along with the tags that is it is not spam and it is spam so this along with this label information the system is being trained and once a new data which is unlabeled is coming so it can predict the label so from input to output this mapping is actually being drawn by an algorithm that is a supervised learning algorithm fine next as i mentioned that there are two types of algorithm one is classification and another is regression classification means there is a output variable which is, should be a fixed type that means suppose red or blue disease or no disease like that a fixed category is there but regression is a problem where output variable is a real value such as dollar or weight or rupees like that did you get the problem now did you mean uh, the, the difference of the regression and classification these are actually the based on the problems these sort two types of algorithms or learning algorithms are divided so, you know, we are given with an example also. Uh, Sir. Yes. Uh, is uh, regression uh, similar to interpolation because like... Yes, yes. Some, some way you can uh, also imagine. But interpolation is also applicable in classification because once we have a mapping function, that mapping functions is actually uh, based on an interpolating function. Okay. Hmm. So it is also applicable to classification also. So regression has a bit of difference with interpolation. Uh, yes, it's a bit of difference with the interpolation in that sense. Here actually you see that the uh, regression kind of a problem, the real numbers are there. Suppose 2.5, 3.5, 5.5, a continuous values are given with the data. Not a fixed set of classes are given. Yes. like in case of classification problems like in dollars or weights so there is a continuous values are there for each of the data suppose i i will ask you to prepare a data set 
on the weights of different students of different streams of your stream suppose someone is 50 kg someone is 40 kg someone is 30 kg someone maybe 60 kg like that okay so this is a kind of a data but the label is actually discrete uh, sorry it's a continuous one did you get the point yes sir is real real data actually a continuous valid data so this is a regression problem and if we want to classify a student and if we want to predict the class level of a student so it is also a continuous score it, it should give but my point is that continuous scores can also be converted into a classified score also if we can fix those ranges by our manual uh, means intervention also we can convert the problem of regression into classification so just try to remember it not necessarily you have to think uh, by putting your head in that way but uh, try to remember that the regression problems can be converted into classification problems also we'll see how it can be converted okay sir. thank you sir okay and unsupervised things you know there is no labels are there we do not know which one is dark which one is um, uh, which category it should belong to the there is no information prior it is totally uh, untagged data or unlabeled data so ai system is presented with the unlabeled data uncategorized data and uh, without any prior training the system algorithms act the data without any prior training in supervised algorithms there is a kind of a phase that is called training because by uh, uh, applying on the label data it tries to be get trained but in unsupervised learning there is no phase of training so what it does it applies on the data and it tries to identify some kind of a groups so groups means some kind of a uh, clusters or un uh, based on some underlying distributions of the structures it tries to predict the group so what by what properties or by depending on what kind of a features it tries to make that group so that depends on the algorithm itself but truly speaking in earlier days there is no scope of supervised algorithms even so our machine learning algorithms were there so first starting was there is the unsupervised learning algorithms at that time people or statisticians or mathematicians were trying to develop the their own algorithms which are actually suitable for their data so based on the data because if we do not know what kind of a data that we have it is always preferable to do the hard coded program to group the data or to classify the data or to cluster the data so unsupervised learning algorithms is always better it is safe and there is no means requirement of training also but uh, you know that till date the infrastructures are available data are available and even the label data are becoming available that's why supervised algorithms are becoming popular fine then another uh, uh, classification of unsupervised algorithms even means like supervised algorithms classification and regression unsupervised algorithms are also means uh, uh, are shown from two different perspectives one is called clustering Clustering means clustering is a kind of a problem that we need to identify the inherent groupings of the data. The discover the inherent groupings that how uh, the groupings are actually being conducted into different uh, uh, algorithmic phases. That is it. actually unsupervised algorithms are actually run by iterative way. Iteration one, two, three, four, and like that. And once there is a uh, boundary cross, then we stop the algorithms. And like that way, the unsupervised uh, learning algorithms performs. So clustering is uh, one type of problem of cluster uh, means uh, unsupervised learning where we try to discover the inherent groupings of the data, how the data are actually grouped, what kind of a properties that are there in the data set so that they can form a group. So this kind of a knowledge we want to discover. There are uh, association which is actually uh, uh, association rule is a kind of a technique or is a kind of a method by which we try to identify the rules that tend to uh, means um, uh, cluster the data means suppose if uh, um, if there is a um, fire then there is a smoke so this is a rule fine so fire and smoke so these are actually associated with each other 
so this association or this machine learning uh, this uh, program hard coded algorithms are actually there in unsupervised learning where we provide some kind of a if else rules if this then else this then else if this and like that so these are actually the associations between the rules association properties actually help us to mining or to uh, identify the insights of the data how they are actually distributed in the nature or uh, in the in your data set or how they are trying to form a cluster uh, from the data set how to discover them the clusters what are the insights of the data so this kind of analysis are actually part of the unsupervised learning fine apart from supervised and unsupervised learning the another part that is called reinforcement learning reinforcement learning is that by uh, interacting with the environment if we want or if we an agent or a bot tries to learn something so learns by interacting with its environment an agent receives rewards by performing correctly and penalties by performing incorrectly that means each and every step the agent will be rewarded if it performs correctly and will be uh, will get penalty if it performs incorrectly in this way the uh, the agent will be uh, will become much more intelligent in one and after steps and by looking at different samples of the data it tries to get its intelligence more and more so uh, based on the penalty it can identify okay no i will not go to that part i will go to other part in this way the classification is actually being done that uh, by rewarding and by giving penalty our bot is becoming intelligent as well as our data is also being generated uh, in a uh, means categorized data is also being generated as well as it can predict that if these are the instances then uh, any if new instance comes then what i will act how i will act and what kind of a update i will do so first step is observation second step is some taking some policy then action and then it will get reward or penalty based on that it will try to update its policy policy is nothing but the hard code program that it has that uh, i will give uh, if this is the case i will get reward if this is the case i will not get reward and in this way it will update the policy by looking at different samples of the data it tries to get it intelligence and then it iterate until an optimal policy is found that means until it achieves that okay i observed 50 uh, lakhs instances of the uh, cases where i get rewarded and i get 500 cases of uh, things that i get unrewarded or i get penalty so i am not quite capable to predict that which one is uh, should be rewarded and which one should not be rewarded so in this way it gets the intelligence one by one fine is it okay now uh sir i have a question yes uh sir so this means that uh, the in case a new data is being created uh, a new categorized data is being created so the penalty points are also being stored for that categorized data uh so this means that uh, every time a new data is being created uh, the penalty points for all the remaining data has to be refreshed uh, in order to match uh, a suitable value for the new data means uh, in order to determine which is a uh, more worse situation so yes. the pen penalty points has to be adjusted after every instance or iteration yes yes it's true that's why reinforcement algorithms are not uh, that much of popular like supervised algorithms so you are absolutely correct that uh, because it is an iterative step right so each and every time we uh, have a new data always our previous data or policies should be updated and uh, it has no kind of a fixed set uh, that we can say okay uh, the uh, but but uh, truly speaking there is a kind of a saturations or a kind of a optimal uh, is there so optimality can be found by this algorithms where we can assure that okay once the new data will come also it it can perform sub 60% of accuracy that we can assure it did you get my point uh yes sir yes sir okay so maybe it is not endless uh, way but we can assure that it is an optimal solution for that optimality can be assured 
no problem is there but uh, you are also correct that each and for suppose uh, for 10 instances i have identified and 11 instances of different new one so i have to update the policies what we have taken for the 10 instances previously that is required here Okay, sir. Uh, and sir, since this is so much memory intensive, yes, so yes. what is the application means why we will use reinforcement learning means because yeah. if we have to uh, yeah. make decisions in a short time means we mm -hmm. uh, need to do yeah. it faster. The thing is that uh, there are some uh, cases where it is very difficult to collect the data. Truly speaking, suppose in medical uh, domain especially, Suppose I need to get the data from the patients where they are have a stomach problems. Fine. So once we go to the patients and I, if I ask them, maybe he is in bed rest, he cannot give the answer, right? Yes, sir. Some other patients, there may be some salines are going on. They can also cannot give the answer. Fine. So a lot of problems are there in real life scenario to collect the data, right? So what this reinforcement algorithms help in that way suppose if there is a fixed set of uh, means uh, means uh, reports are there right for those patients the reports are available right so from the reports the agent will try to get the knowledge but okay if this is the report then uh, we will say yes and this is the report we will say no in this way and if yes, then the patient is being recovered, and if no, the patient will not is being recovered. In this way, it tries to it tries starting predicting one by one after another because in this domain especially the data acquisition is itself a very tedious job. Did you get my point? Yes, sir. Where the data acquisition is very tedious job, there only the agent based system or reinforcement algorithms can only help us. Okay, sir. Okay, because in suppose some satellite information, okay, because it is very difficult to collect the data from the satellite or even from the uh, Jupiter, right? So, yes, uh, so from there we have to process the reinforcement uh, learning algorithms, otherwise, there is no way, okay? Okay, sir. Sir, but uh, then what is uh, the difference of this with the classification? Because in classification as well, if we make a wrong uh, guess. Or a wrong estimate then we are penalty and then we have to correct uh, the the weights or something to adjust the classification no i didn't get your question properly uh, sir like in reinforcement learning what we're doing if the agent is making a decision like let's say a yes or no decision and then it is making a decision that is wrong or like bad for it then it is getting penalty so it is correcting the decision on the next trial hmm. uh, and in classification as well like uh, let's say we are doing a cat and dog classification if we do like if we classify a cat as a dog then uh, the classification algorithm is also getting like penalty because of the wrong result and it will update the weights so that it classifies the cat as a cat in the next right so what is the difference uh, uh, no the thing is that dynamicity is not being incorporated into supervised learning in that way actually uh, mm, uh, the thing is that Suppose in supervised learning, once the training is over, we cannot change the means uh, the, that state. Means we have to ref, uh, refresh the algorithms or you have to start the algorithms by writing in refresh means uh, new algorithms we have to write, right? Training phase once it is over. But in case of uh, reinforcement learning, this always the training phase is going on in a dynamic way, right? I, I think uh, is it clear or uh, you need more explanation on that because so, in a classification here also the classification is going on in a reinforcement also reinforcement also the classification is going on but uh, there is no kind of a such training no okay sir. so so uh, like a recommendation system will it be a classification system or a reinforcement system uh, recommendation system is uh, is a combination of both because the recommendation is more about the reinforcement learning actually because based on the feedback of the users or environment it tries to tune the system right yes, so it sir. is a kind of a reinforcement in that sense okay okay 
but there are a lot of supervised applications also in recommendations in music or in those parts. Okay, because reinforcement algorithm, the problem is only the memory or, or the storage capacity because you know that it, it requires a storage in each of the instances it tries to refresh that uh, uh, information existing policies it can be replaced so a lot of memory re requirement is there in case of reinforcement algorithm and within a single chip it is very difficult to uh, embed that algorithm you know in a feasible way so that is the main issue over here okay okay, okay. So there are applications uh, there. So applications uh, of machine learning is all over there, uh, like in reinforcement algorithms. So uh, you know um, uh, there are uh, kind of a you you are asking about the recommender systems. You see, it is a kind of a clustering based algorithms only. Uh, but uh, you can apply the reinforcement over here to make it more intelligent, right? Clustering is actually being done in uh, at, the, at the background, and then reinforcement can be done on the from the input side, means the user feedback. Okay, so anything you can do by your uh, observation or your requirement. Uh, so machine learning is actually the core part where the unsupervised, supervised, and reinforcement all are there basically the game theory or game applications the reinforcement algorithms are very much popular because the new gaming applications you know that all are based on the reinforcement learning algorithms then uh, robotic applications like navigations of the robots in space or in satellite then real-time decision making where it is required then uh, skill acquisitions uh, skill acquisition with uh, learning a new skills on uh, how to develop the skills that kind of applications the reinforcement learning is popular supervised learning is popular in case of um, image class classification uh, fraud detection like fake news detections and so on customer retention diagnosis health classification advertising regression types of problems are helpful in marketing weather forecasting uh, then uh, life expectancy uh, prediction whether in case of unsupervised there are two types we mentioned that clustering clustering is uh, again useful for recommendation marketing customer segregation because clustering uh, is a very uh, fast step to uh, get a very good insights of the data so always people because recommendation and uh, this kind of a marketing jobs do not require a huge amount of data with a very small amount of data, it tries to predict what is the result. So in those cases, clustering algorithms works much faster and uh, performs very um, efficiently. So in that case, we employ them. And in case of dimensional deductions, a lot of uh, applications areas, uh, big data, we will see that what is feature elicitation and uh, how we can reduce the dimensionality also. Because unsupervised learning, you know, that there is no labeled information is there instead the level information only the if the features are there the features may be trillions and billions in numbers so dimensionality reduction or feature dimensionality uh, reduction is one of the important tasks in machine learning so in case of especially in unsupervised learning where we try to reduce the feature space into a reasonable number of features so that the uh, algorithms or the program can perform much better way so these are some of the applications in frameworks you may uh, maybe you are uh, this is a known framework so weka it is a well known framework rapid miner is a well known framework r is a very well known framework for uh, means dealing with this kind of a jobs in machine learning then in nlp and then uh, our uh, natural language processing in python we there is a package called nltk which we use also Weka we use also, rapid miner R also we use. So these are some of the frameworks or pass, uh, means packages that are very much useful for uh, building the applications on machine learning. Because in Weka, all of the machine learning classifier stuffs are there. Once we feed the data, it can easily uh, predict the results 
because you you may not include your own algorithms if you can try to include your own algorithms also you can use the frameworks also like r or nltk and like that fine up to that any any question hello it's not audible uh, am I audible? yes a bit so it's not it's not as audible it's too much noisy so which of the following frameworks we will use in our course no here uh, these are some of the examples because we cannot um, forcefully you we can say to learn all of those stuffs or one of the stuffs like that maybe you can means uh, we will go through some of the parts on nltk python because we used to deal with the text data mostly that we have but as it is a multidisciplinary course uh, so i cannot mention that uh, you have to learn python you do uh, nltk you do not need to learn others because i have seen the data from electrical mechanical even uh, power and construction also so only the data are in some kind of a table format some scores are there in the data so uh, generally we try to uh, uh, suggest to work with the weka also because weka you can feed the data and then you can apply the classifiers also so weka is a very good framework for all of you i think in a multidisciplinary fashion all of you can use the weka in that sense so that is the um, uh, means i cannot force you to learn all of them but uh, i think if once you are familiar with one of the frameworks at least weka then i think all of the disciplines uh, you will get uh, some kind of a good uh, experience over that okay so so do you suggest we should uh, just go for uh, uh, developing some knowledge about uh, weka for yes, suggestion yes, yes. i know sir a, a bit of python and how the functioning language works i don't know about weka so should i just okay no 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 python if you know also so using python you can extract the data and then uh, you can apply in weka also no problem is there and okay. even in python also you can work i have no means uh, means it is it is not always uh, uh, means proper to say that you should use python and uh, you should not use weka like that because we can python in both way you can use if someone wants to try rapid miner they can use there is no restriction in that sense because all of the classifiers most of the traditional classifiers are available in this all of these platforms but in weka means most of the classifiers are there that's why you prefer and in python always we used to code because we used to deal with the text and other images also so generally you prefer okay so i think there is no uh, uh sessional uh, answer, one answer one more thing uh, sir do you suggest any reference textbook or the ppt is sufficient i think ppts are sufficient and if you want to read textbook then uh, this um, uh, i will suggest uh, one of them but it is too tough i guess i think for uh, you to read because uh, you know that is um, in score machine learning lot of mathematical stuffs are there you may not get anything you may be frustrated over there that's why i just try to uh, uh, suggest you to go through this slides first then uh, after taking the course then you try to go some uh, books also i will recommend those books also and you will then uh, you try to cover it up Okay. Otherwise, it will be very frustrating uh, because sir? you will see a lot of mathematical equations. You will got get lost. Yeah, okay. Yes. Uh, sir, so uh, will we learn about the mathematics like uh, uh, the the? Yes. Yeah, this is an important question. Yes. It is an important question that try to learn the mathematics, statistics, and uh, bit kind of a yeah, mathematics and statistics and uh, mathematics like linear algebra, matrices. and those things and statistics like correlation variance and those parts you try to learn by yourself so that it will be very easy to cope up with with the course uh, okay. so sir like in this course we will be reading about the naive base or the hidden markov yeah. and all of that naive base we will learn decision tree we will learn random forest we will learn uh, svm we will learn and uh, latent semantic analysis uh, then term uh, tf idf we will learn vector space model we will learn and uh, let's see how much we can progress over this course so will we have fuzzy logic in this course fuzzy logic some of the portions we will try to cover also not more not more okay sir okay
fine so i think uh, today i can stop here because otherwise it will be too much for uh, you to grasp with in the next day i onwards i think i will start the data and feature because it is very important part and uh, it is the part of machine learning actually data and feature selection so we'll go one by one in a very minute manner so that it will be easy for you to grasp also because conceptually first you have to clear then you try to think and then employ the algorithms and develop the algorithms also okay so i think we can stop here if you have any questions you can ask no problem is uh, so one thing i have a request uh, so if you, we uh, the previous uh, seniors have not faced a optional paper like this and we don't have previous question papers of this subject also so while during the course can you please give some sample questions and something like that so that we can prepare for the semesters as well sample questions are uh, maybe from my part sample questions are there and uh, i think i have taken chemical i think chemical okay so if you could please share the uh, share some question papers yeah. because we have yeah. no idea what is going to be asked in a uh, in the exams because other subjects we know but this no is exams totally you have a theory, you know, this is the theoretical papers you have to write something right as I... okay so. okay so we should uh, go through the chemical uh, chemical engineering so we will find papers on uh, this machine learning then yeah chemical engineering previous year one batch was there i think in open elective okay sir. any any other question just a minute just a minute for starting this क्यों कि बोलते जा मन स्टॉप yes because uh, at least two three classes i want to see then uh, you can also make your convenient time and i can conduct the class first two three classes is very important in other days actually what happens is regarding some other schedules are mixed and lot of uh, means hardiness will be there it is very difficult to comprehend even for you and even for me also okay so that's why first two three classes then uh, one algorithms will be there in a day so you will get one by one not an issue any day we can conduct and evening time if you are free also i can take the classes no problem is there also okay okay any more question so i 